one. Come on. Come on. Yeah! Man, I've been on a roll recently. From taking down crime bosses, playing extreme sports at the beach, and even showing that prehistoric bitch how we do things downtown. But I wonder, what else is left for me to conquer? Hmm. Nah, overdone. Are you girls trying to tell me something? Play dinosaur game, old man! That's it! I'll play Jurassic Park for Sega Genesis! Great idea, Indigo! That's why I'm in charge! I got I tart! Jurassic Park is an action-adventure game published by Sega and developed by Blue Sky Software. It was released in August of 1993 for the Sega Genesis slash Mega Drive as a merchandising tie-in to the movie. Doug Tenable, who would a year later create the iconic character of Earthworm Jim, was the lead artist to Jurassic Park. The development team would also consult with experts such as paleontologist Robert Baker, who dissected a supermarket chicken to show the differences between bird anatomy and dinosaur anatomy, so that the game could properly reflect the latest dinosaur discoveries and theories of the day. The development team would also take trips to the Museum of Natural History and to the zoo to observe feeding habits and movements of reptiles and birds. The 3D models of the game's dinosaurs were created using stop motion photography, while a team member dressed and acting out Grant's movements was digitized into the game. Kind of like in the Mortal Kombat series. The game also features ADI, artificial dinosaur intelligence, causing enemy dinosaurs to react differently every time you play a level, making no two playthroughs the same. So guys, with all those little tidbits out of the way, hold on to your butts! Let's start this review! When you boot up the game, you're greeted to the classic Sega chant performed by the lovely singing voice of the T-Rex. Then it's on to a pretty cool intro to the menu screen. A cool thing about Jurassic Park is you have the choice between playing a human, Grant, or a dinosaur, the raptor. I'll pick Grant. I'm not really into that whole raptor thing. Once the game has started, you have an awesome intro scene that follows the movie really well. The power goes out and the T-Rex comes out and wrecks your car, so Grant has to lug it to the power station while avoiding the loose dinosaurs. You have three lives for each playthrough. You can acquire various weapons to battle the dinosaurs with, such as the blue sedation darts, the stronger red darts, electrical shotguns, rockets, and smoke grenades, flash grenades, and napalm grenades. There are also first aid packs in several locations in every level to patch you up from damage taken. The dinosaurs you must deal with is the Brontosaurus, a non-violent dinosaur that is mainly an obstacle to overcome throughout the game. The Dilophosaurus, or Spitters, who are by far the most annoying dinosaur in the game with its acid spit and shrill scream. <sighs> the Triceratops, who is passive aggressive and if upset, she will throw you around the screen like a rag doll. Though not really a dinosaur, the Pterarodon. Pterodactyl! Yes, thank you, Kimberly. Pterodactyl! But that's not a Pterodactyl! Okay, you made your point. Anyway, the Pterodon will dive and strafe at you. They are easily dealt with, especially with sedation darts. The Pisanosaurus, also known as the Compies, are the small dinosaurs that like to take a little bite out of you. They're the second most annoying dinosaur to deal with next to the Spitters, but they are easily dealt with hell. You can even just stomp on them. The Velociraptor will be your main protagonist throughout most of the game. The Raptor's AI is higher than most other dinosaurs in the game, referring to the Raptor's high intelligence in the book and the movie. As the game progresses, the Raptors become increasingly smarter, being able to kick doors open, dodge your attacks, and even resisting some of your weapons. The Tyrannosaurus Rex only appears in certain parts of Grant's playthrough. She can't be killed, and if you get too close, she's going to take you out in one chomp. You must use certain weapons like smoke grenades or flashbangs to temporarily blind the T-Rex so you can pass by safely. Honestly, it's not wise to fight dinosaurs unless you absolutely have to. There's a little bit of resource management with your weapons, so if you go about fighting every dinosaur you run into, you'll have no more weapons left to defend yourself with. Your main goal is to platform so you can get to the end of each level. I would highly suggest taking your time on the first level of the jungle to learn to get comfortable with the controls as Grant can move a little twitchy. Once you finish the first level, the game expects you to have a decent understanding of the platforming mechanics and the controls. The power station is the first time you'll run into a raptor. Just hit it with the red dart and it'll go down, but only for a few seconds, so don't stick around. If they hit you, it's hard to escape from them, and you'll lose a ton of health each time they hit you. 
The power station is also filled with electrical hazards. They take a bit of health off and immobilize you for a second, making you an easy target for dinosaurs. You'll also have to go through a ventilation system with compies harassing you all the way through it. The raptors will also ambush you at certain points without warning in this level. Before you can leave the power station, you must turn the power back on, and unluckily for you, the T-Rex is loitering near the power switch. Blind the big lug and you can easily get past her. The water raft level is by far one of the hardest ones for me in this game. You must keep your raft fueled with fuel cans, and they're conveniently strewn throughout the level and guarded by spitters and raptors. Aside from them being able to kill you like usual, these dinosaurs can also knock you into the river for an instant kill. You must be very careful which waterfall you go down, as most will lead to a quick death. This level is very unforgiving, as I got several game overs, but a cool feature in this game is after a game over, the last level's password is already preloaded, so it's easy to jump right back into that action without having to punch in some stupid code. Once you've successfully navigated the river by avoiding pitfalls, T-Rexes, and various other dinosaurs, you get to the bottom of the stage with calm waters, but there's some brontosaurus down there that can easily tip your raft over, so timing is key in getting past them. And just for giggles, it seems they put a Triceratops right at the end to knock you right back into the water. Just gas her and get past her, and you'll move on to the next stage. That password... Nah, it couldn't be. The pump station will put your platforming skills to the test, as in the beginning, there's not much dinosaurs to be found, but plenty of hazards and death drops can be. You'll also run into rockets for the first time on this level. I suggest saving those for later. Trust me on this. There's some pretty tricky parts of this level, like jumping from a brontosaurus into a pipe and avoiding getting crushed by a large disc. There's also a T-Rex blocking your way in this level, but by this point, she should feel just like a brontosaurus, a manageable obstacle to overcome. The raptors, however, on this level are becoming smarter and more aggressive as they start dodging your attacks and playing dead to catch you off guard. Clever girl! Another obstacle in this level is steam from broken pipes. You must use valves to turn them off to advance in the level. In another area, the steam is spraying out of a big vat, and you must time your run just right to get through them. The final part of the level is a straight run to the end, but it's guarded by raptors. You can risk running it or stay at the top and wait for the raptors to make the first move, so you can fill them full of dart. Canyon is a short but treacherous level with raptors, spitters, and pterodons harassing you all the way through it. Also, there's many pitfalls and falling debris that can take you out. The volcano has the same tone as the canyon, and I feel they could have combined the two levels as they have the same song, dinosaurs, and even hazards, minus the lava. The volcano, however, has very tricky platforming in some areas. You have to time your jumps just right and take leaps of faith in certain places, or you'll face certain death. The final level is the visitor center, and I hope you've done a good job saving up all of your ammo, especially those rockets, because by this point, it's a straight-up war with the raptors. They litter the level and are very smart and hard to beat. The raptors can also open doors now, so nowhere is safe from them. They'll aggressively hunt you down, so the rocket and napalm grenade are the only way to take them out for good. By this point, the spitter with its annoying attack and scream has really pissed me off, so I quite enjoyed using a rocket on it. After several dead dinosaurs and a blinded T-Rex, you have your final showdown with the raptors in the visitor center. Don't try to have a knockdown dragout fight with these guys, as they're invincible and your weapons can't kill them. I found that while they're busy eating their dinner, two well-placed napalm grenades under the base of the T-Rex and Brontosaurus bone displays will cause them to collapse on top of the raptors, killing them instantly. A little anticlimactic for a boss fight if you ask me, but you do get a cool ending where you take off in a helicopter with a silhouetted T-Rex roaring at you as you escape the island. And with all that out of the way, let's move on to the graphics. Excuse me, Tubit, but you haven't played your raptor mode yet. <gasps> oh my dad, it's Raptor Jesus, president of MFers. You know, messiahs for everyone's rights. Yeah, Raptor Jesus, I decided to skip over the raptor mode because it's basically the same levels and essentially the same gameplay. Are you against raptors or something? A raptor racist? A raptorist? No, no, it's nothing like that. I'll play the raptor. I'm glad to hear that. Goodbye, my son. Drex be with you. Stupid union. What the f*** did you say? Nothing, sir. The raptor mode is a lot more straightforward than when playing as Grant. You're greeted with a cutscene showing how the raptor escaped its cage and picked up the scent of Grant, and so the hunt is on. Just like with Grant, the first level serves as a pseudo tutorial mode for the raptor. There's much less emphasis on precise platforming as the raptor has very powerful attacks, can jump extraordinarily high, and is very fast. In fact, the raptor is way more twitchy than Grant, so pitfalls to your death and leaps of faith are heavily featured with the raptor. The spitters, pterodons, and compies return in this mode. Compies can be used as a food source to restore health. 
However, the T-Rex, Brontosaurus, and Triceratops are absent, replaced by a small army of engine employees who are trying to stop you from chasing Grant and escaping the island. They have a variety of Grant's weapon abilities, so take them out fast before they can deal out a lot of damage. There are drumsticks throughout every level to restore your health, like the first aid packs for Grant. The power station is very straightforward, just run through avoiding attacks and taking out enemies to get in your way. Not much of a challenge to be found on this one. The pump station is probably the hardest level for the raptor. There's a lot of platforming on this one, and as stated before, the raptor is very twitchy on the control, so expect a lot of quick deaths on this level. Enemies appear in key places where you need to platform, so timing is key to not get knocked down to certain death. This level also has sections where you jump from platform to platform over water, and as you advance the platforms get smaller, and with the raptor just thinking of tapping left to right will send you to a watery grave. With all this intense platforming action out of the way, it's all downhill from here, as the canyon level is very short and relatively easy compared to the tortures at the pump station. You advance to the final level, the visitor center. This level is also very straightforward. Get to Grant and kill any human or dinosaur in your way. The engine employees are also very heavily armed in this level, so don't be like me and try to power through them. Fight smart, guys. In your final showdown with Grant, he sits atop the dinosaur displays, throwing grenades at you. Just like with Grant's showdown with the raptors, you must attack the display's bases to bring them crashing down and send Grant running. You're greeted to an ending that shows that you have sneaked into a cargo crate. I guess you really didn't care about eating Grant. And why would the dog workers not notice a raptor creepily looking out of a gaping hole of a crate? I wonder if they're a part of the MFers too. The graphics are awesome. The game has a dark and gritty realistic feel to it. It really captures the mood and theme of the source material, unlike its SNES counterpart with its bright colors and video game look. You can tell it really paid off to bring in some people who worked on the movie to consult with, as all the dinosaurs resemble their movie counterparts very well. The backgrounds are very in-depth and in some parts of my playthrough, I would actually die because I was paying attention to the details in the background and not paying attention to my character in the foreground. With the digitized models and accurate, it gives the game a more lifelike look and really gets you into the world. I have to say the graphics on Jurassic Park for Genesis are the best compared to its SNES counterpart and even its successor Rampage. Just like with the graphics, the sound does not disappoint. From the impactful sound of your raft crashing against the rocks, rockets and napalm grenades exploding, Grant's bombastic yell as he falls to his death, or the shrill, wheezing scream of a raptor dying. The music is awesome as well, setting a very dark and moody tone with ambient dinosaur calls in the background. I actually got scared a few times thinking a raptor was about to pounce on me, only to realize it was just the stage music. They did a wonderful job composing for this game, as each stage has its own unique soundtrack, minus the canyon and volcano stages shared theme. The final level song is really cool too, because it gives you a sense of urgency as you're trying to escape the island. And while not having the orchestral masterpiece of the film in this game, the music is still excellent and true to the source material it is inspired from. Jurassic Park for Genesis is an excellent game, especially when you consider it was just a 12-person team who had a little over a year to complete the game. That being said, there are some cons, like the Raptor. Its levels feel short and empty, and it seems like they ran out of time when creating that mode, as Grant's playthrough feels more fully fleshed out. Also, the controls for both Grant and the Raptor feel a little twitchy. They would rectify these issues in the sequel, Rampage Edition, by giving the Raptor a little bit more love and the controls a more solid feel. The boss fights are also very anticlimactic, as I would have loved to have had a knockdown, drag out fight with the raptors. As I attacked them, they would get up and keep charging me, until the T-Rex would show up like in the movie and take them out so I could escape. The raptors boss fight is also anticlimactic. After chasing Grant all over the island, I would have loved to have eaten that bastard for all the trouble he caused me. Those critiques, however, are very negligible on the overall experience of the game. In a short time frame, Doug Tenaple and his team were able to deliver a solid experience with the same dark, creepy tone the movie had set. It also draws elements from the book as well, because the pump station and river level are both directly inspired from the novel, giving this game more depth. It's rare to see in a movie game tie-in be so solidly built and true to the movie it's based on. Most just seem like a cash grab with little substance for source material or game design. It goes to show you the love and care that Doug and his team put into this title. My final verdict for Jurassic Park for the sake of Genesis is it's a must-play and a must-buy. If you're searching for that definitive game based on the original Jurassic Park, this is it. With two story modes and a very smart AI, it has high replayability rate. Even after 20 years since it was released, I'm still coming back to play it. It's a great game, even with its flaws. And most importantly, it's fun to play. 
Thanks for watching, guys, and have a great day. So what'd you girls think? Huh? Yeah. It's much appreciated. If you really like this video, please give us that thumbs up. And if you want to keep up with everything we're doing, hit that subscribe button. That way you won't miss a thing. And if you want to watch more 2-Bit Reviews right now, click this video right here. And if you want to see some of our Soapbox Opinion videos, hit this video right here. Anyway guys, thanks for watching again and have a great day.